Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and today it's been a minute but I am going to be doing another tier list video for the Milwaukee Regionals. Milwaukee is going to be the last tournament I am attending in the Scarlet and Violet meta and I thought why not send it off with a tier list video. It's been a minute since I've done one and uh, this is going to be what I think are the best decks and we're decks rank going into Milwaukee this weekend. I am of course going to be at Milwaukee if anybody hasn't met me yet and uh, wants to meet me I will of course be at the Milwaukee regionals and this is coming off of Hartford so the meta is a little interesting right now going into Milwaukee and of course with Paldea evolved just around the corner um, I thought why not kind of send off this format with a bang I am not doing a tier list for Fresno I'm not also not going to Fresno so Milwaukee is my last one so I thought why not do one last tier list here in the Scarlet and Violet format before we head off into the Paldea evolved meta which there will be more tier list videos coming out on the channel very soon too so make sure you keep your eye on the channel for all that for some Paldea Evolved content, obviously. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you never miss an upload here on the second channel. And make sure to leave a like in the video and all that good stuff. And I'll leave a link to this tier list down below if you want to go do it yourself. So let's start things off here with the format and where we are. So the first deck I want to talk about here, we got Gardevoir EX. So Gardevoir EX has kind of fallen off of uh, power recently. Gardevoir no longer is that BDIF status deck. Now that Lost Box has effectively bullied it down into kind of the the lower best tier one deck category, if that makes any sense. Uh, Guardi's just kind of flipped a little bit. I still think Guardi is like still like a tier 1.5 deck. Um, it's not any good than a tier 1.5. I don't know if I can call Guardi a tier one deck. And there are a lot of Guardi mains out there who will disagree, but I really think that Gardevoir is one of those risky decks. Now, to be fair, when I went to Hartford, had I played Gardevoir, I only played against two Lost Zone decks the entire tournament. So there's a world where I didn't have to worry about Lost Box. But that ultimately is Gardevoir's biggest Achilles heel right now is, of course, the Lost Zone decks. And with Turbo Lost Box and Sableye Kramzard being really popular, I don't know if there is room for the Guardi deck to be any higher than Tier 1.5 at the moment. I do think Paldea Evolved might give Gardevoir more legs, but I think for now, Gardevoir EX is just a Tier 1.5 deck. I also think that it struggles against uh, Arctina and Arcadura Umbreon is another matchup that I think Gardevoir will have a hard time beating. And also Lugia is still going to be tough regardless. Lugia will still be an issue for Gardevoir at the end of the day. Then we got Guardi Mewtwo, which obviously is probably a tier 2 deck. It's definitely the worst Gardevoir deck. Now, to be fair, Guardi Mewtwo does have a better matchup against Lost Box, but not by much. I don't think that playing Mewtwo is going to give you, like, an auto win against Lost Box. Like, Lost Box can still build up the Raikou pretty quickly, putting on pressure on your Clef Keys. Mewtwo is not the perfect solution to Lost Box, and Gardevoir Mewtwo isn't the... It might be the best way to beat Lost Box if you're going to play Gardevoir, but it's also the one that is the less consistent of each list. Also, it has the worst matchup versus Lugia, which is a big problem. So I would probably just put this in Tier 2. If you want to play a deck that has, like, a more surefire Lost Box matchup, I would play it. Um, but even then, it's not the best matchup for Lost Box. Lost Box can still beat Guardian Mewtwo. It's just you. It's a little bit safer to beat Lost Box when playing Guardian Mewtwo. But it's just a worse uh, Gardevoir deck, which is probably just going to put this deck in tier one or tier two. Next up, we got the Arceus variants. There's actually quite a few right now that are notable. The first one is going to be the Arc Dura Umbreon deck. I'm going to slam this all the way in tier one. I think Arc Dura Umbreon is a great deck in the format right now. Obviously, we saw it perform really well. At Hartford, I mean, I, of course, did pretty well with it, but there was a lot of Arc Dura Umbreon in day two, and I mean, there was a lot of Arc Dura Umbreon. I got 23rd place in the tournament, and I was the 6th highest placing Arc Dura deck, which is kind of insane considering how good the deck performed. So yeah, I think Arc Dura Umbreon is a very good deck right now. It's one of those decks that I don't really know if it's, like, counterable leading into... Um, Milwaukee, because it's just one of those, like, most, it's, like, the most straightforward deck in the meta that it's, it's not really, like, it's not a deck you can counter, per se. The best counter, of course, is going to be those turn one Arc V KO decks, which we'll get to later, but I do think Arc Darmbrion is still fantastic. I don't know even where the deck goes after Hartford, because I still think Radiant Alakazam Halucha is still fantastic in the deck. I think that everything about the deck is, like, perfect, and honestly, I feel like the perfect 60, or at the very least, like, the perfect 58, 59 cards has been figured out by now. Whether or not you want to play Adventures Discovery is up to you. But I do think Arc Darmbrion is a tier one deck. I think it beats a lot of things. Um, and I think it's just a great deck in the meta right now. And it's still very strong, in my opinion, 
Um, it's probably going to see a lot more play in Milwaukee. So if uh, you're very much scared of this deck, I would definitely try to buckle down because I think this deck will see a lot more play in the Milwaukee. Next up is Arc Gudra. We'll throw that in the Rogue category. Arc Gudra is a deck that some people are kind of hyping up or playing at the very least, and I don't know how good it really is. It seems like a cool concept where you can use Gudra V-Star as kind of a big wall. Obviously, this deck does have a few problems. The first issue is it still is like, you know, rope is still a problem. Uh, you still have to deal with the problem of Gudra not having Moisture Star because you're using Starbirth. This deck can abuse Judge and Path, though, uh, which is kind of cool. So if you go down the route of not doing Moisture Star, uh, Arc Goo can use uh, Judge Path, which is a pretty cool combo. Judge Path, Rolling Iron is actually a pretty deadly combo that could be pretty good. So I definitely think Arc Gudra is an interesting deck. I'm not sure how good it is. I also think that the problem with Gudra overall is if you get paired against Arc Dura, you're just basically going to get slapped because Arc Dura will cream Gudra. Uh, next up is Arc Dura Vulpix. So the other Arc Dura deck that's pretty good, and that is Arc Dura Vulpix. So Arc Dura Vulpix, obviously the EUIC winning list. Where does it place in the format? Is Arc Umbreon the better build of Dura or Arc Vulpix the better build of Dura? I think that Arc Umbreon is still the better build of Dura because Umbreon is just a way better partner right now for the Duraludon. It's just better to have the Gust and the Dark typing. So honestly, this is probably a tier two deck. I think that it's still honestly fine. I mean, we saw uh, Lee Bui do pretty well with it. Um, at what, Portland? So, like, the deck is still, like, fine. I don't think it's really a bad deck. I honestly think Arc Dura with anything right now could probably be fine just because of how good Duraludon is. But, yeah, I do think that Arc Dura Vulpix is a perfectly serviceable deck right now. Um, if you want to play something that's a little bit more... I don't even know if I would call it better than Gardevoir because, like, Umbreon still just destroys Gardevoir. Like, I don't even know if, like, the Vulpix matters because I think Umbreon is still really good in the Guardian matchup. But, I mean, if you want to something that, like, I guess has a fair matchup against the Gardevoir deck, then maybe Arc Dura Vulpix is to play. Gardevoir no longer respects Vulpix as much. They'll still play the Memory Skip Rolls, obviously. And Memory Skip Rolls is actually still pretty good against, like, Duraludon. So, like, Memory Skip Rolls is still a very decent card in the format right now. But I think that, like, Vulpix could still be better against Guardi than most things. Like, again, Guardi doesn't really care about Vulpix anymore. So it's one of those cards that you could probably just play. And if you have Gardevoir and you do well against them, you should probably be fine. So maybe Arctor Vulpix is fine. I can't put it any higher than Tier 2. But I do think it's still, like, an okay play nonetheless. Next up is the Arc Pika deck. Arc Pika Espeon. I mean, probably Tier 2. It's another deck, though, that is one of the... I don't even know if it's, like, a bad deck. It's, like, Arctor of Vulpix. You can probably play it and do well with it. Flying Pikachu is still decent right now, in my opinion. Um, it still is okay against Lost Box. Like, I think that Judge Pikachu is a good combo. Though I think that Pikachu Judge Path is a stronger combo. But the Flying Pikachu can still cause problems. It's also not bad against Lugia. Um, then, of course, the Espeon VMAX could be kind of cute, too, against, like, Sableye. Espeon VMAX can also be a nice big attacker. Espeon could be pretty good in the Dura matchup, too. So you do have that, like, decent backup option versus Duraludon. So maybe the Espeon is warranted in that regard. But, yeah, I do think that Arc Dura Pikachu, or Arc Pikachu Espeon, sorry, that, that'd be an interesting deck. It's still, like, fine in the format. Um, call it a Tier 2 deck. Um, next up is Arc Tina. Uh, I'll put that in Tier 1.5. I think Arc Tina is kind of one of those decks that can go up and down i mean yes it did win a tournament but i'm honestly not sold on where this deck places anymore because honestly arc dura or arc tina i keep calling it arc dura arc tina is definitely an interesting archetype in the format though overall i think that it's kind of just fine it's good i think its issue is is it's just a little too simplistic i also think with the rise of mew it's going to struggle a little bit more i think arc tina has a worse Mew matchup than even something like Arc Dura because Arc Tina relies heavily on like Judge and Path, which is good against Mew. Don't get me wrong, but I still think that it's not enough. And I don't know where Arc Tina goes going forward. Maybe it plays Drapion. Maybe it plays Flying Pikachu. If I were playing Arc Tina, I would still maybe consider playing the Flying Pikachu because it just helps you more against Lost Box. But Arc Tina is perfectly serviceable. I'm gonna put it in tier 1.5. It's a perfectly fine deck. Um, I maybe think you need the Pikachu if you're going to take down Lost Box, because Lost Box is still going to basically destroy you, but we'll have to see where Arctina goes. Still a fine deck. I mean, there's a lot of people that just main it. It's one of those decks that, again, just doesn't really change its position. I think it's always just kind of in this tier 1.5 category. Let me take a talk about Mew. So, Fusion Mew, I would probably classify tier 1.5. Same with DT Mew. I think both these decks are probably tier 1.5 decks. I think they're both pretty good decks in the format right now. Um, both of them do have their own strengths and weaknesses. Double Turbo Mew gets to be a little bit more disruptive, and Fusion Mew gets to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, Fusion Mew does have a better time into Arceus decks. I think that is going to be the main factor when deciding what Mew deck you want to play. If you want to play a Mew deck that probably beats Arceus, you should play Fusion Mew. Fusion Mew should be able to just wipe the floor with Arceus decks, because you can turn one Meloetta Donk and Arceus V. That's huge. 
Um, you can also use Meloetta against other big V decks. Like, it's probably decent against Lugia. And then, of course, Double Turbo Mew is a little bit more technical with its plays. I think the issue with Mew ultimately will be the downfall of Lugia. I think Lugia is still going to be difficult. Meloetta Mew might have a better Mew matchup than Double Turbo Mew, because Double Turbo Mew really does rely on, like, the Judge Path sticking, where Fusion Mew relies more on the dog. So I think Fusion Mew will still play, like, a path at the end of the day. But honestly, Meloetta Mew is still a fine deck, in my opinion. Um... I don't know. It's tough to say which one I like more. The problem also with the, the Fusion Mew, Fusion Mew has a worse matchup against Lost Box. I know that the deck plays like a Deoxys to help against Cram, and then of course you have like a couple Judges, and I think a Roxanne would still be put in the uh, the deck. But yeah, overall, I do think that Fusion Mew is still going to struggle against Lost Box more than Double Turbo Mew, but Mew ultimately will still struggle against Lost Box at the end of the day, whether or not they play Drapion. If they just have like Kyogre, right, it's pretty easy for Turbo Lost Box Kyogre to beat your Mew deck because they'll just basically time a Kyogre We'll get around Roxanne and then just Kyogre 2 Genesec. So it's like, it's not the perfect matchup, but I do think that Double Turbo Mew and Fusion Mew are both pretty good. Um, if I were to play any of the two, I would maybe consider playing Fusion Mew. Fusion Mew does appeal to me with the Rise and Arceus variants right now and the fact that Meloetta can donk an Arceus V. It's a pretty good reason to maybe want to play Fusion Mew. So I'm going to put Fusion Mew and Double Turbo Mew both in Tier 1.5. Mew's probably just a good Tier 1.5 deck. It's also one of those decks people are just going to play more Drapion now. But I do like it. And if you honestly expect more Arceus or you want to just have a better time into Arceus decks, I would probably go Fusion Mew. If you want to respect Lost Box more, maybe go Double Turbo Mew. Next up is Rapid Strike. Probably a Tier 2 deck right now. Rapid Strike still perfectly fine in the format. Still has a pretty decent Lost Box matchup. And you're probably still beating um, other decks too. Like, I think Gardevoir is pretty beatable too, to be honest. Like, I think Inteleon also can beat Guardi. Uh, yeah, Rapid Strike Inteleon is a decent deck overall. It's a deck that definitely, like, when your opponent flips over a Comfy, as long as it's not Gudra, then you're pretty happy. And that's why I like having Inteleon in the meta. I think Inteleon's perfectly fine right now. Um, its issue will still be, like, something like Lugia. I also think Arc Dura is a tough matchup for Inteleon because Inteleon VMAX doesn't work against Duraludon. You can't use Rapture Strike Energy with Inteleon VMAX, and it doesn't work against Dura. So that isn't going to work, unfortunately. But, yeah, Inteleon's definitely an interesting deck right now. Um, still decent. Again, it has that fine matchup against... Uh, Lost Box, and no, to be fair, it's Maridon matchup might not be too bad either. You just set up double Urshifu, you just KO two Maridon, easy peasy. Uh, yeah, Italian's okay. Definitely don't hate it in the format right now. Uh, tier 2 at best. Um, honestly, yeah, Tier 2 is pretty good. I, I don't think it goes any higher than Tier 2. Next up is Kiram. Obviously, we're going to put that in the Rogue Bad category. Basically, just an ultimate meme deck that maybe got a little too out of hand. It is a really cool archetype that could be okay, but with, like, Path in the format, it's not very good. But I think it's a fun deck to play, but I don't, I wouldn't recommend it if you want to try to win a tournament. If you get Day 2 with it, though, I mean, that's awesome. It's definitely a really cool deck that I want to see it have a fun performance. I mean, it did have one Day 2 already, but I want to see it have an even better performance than it already did. So, like, I would love to see this deck at, like, top 3 or 2 or something. It'd be the funniest thing ever, but, yeah, definitely, like, more of a rogue bad deck. Next up are the Lugia decks. Now, Lugia is still just absolutely insane right now. I mean, we're going to say that Lugia is just S-tier. I don't think anyone's going to deny Lugia is just so good right now. I think the Urshifu VMAX is still the way to go in the Lugia deck. Um, it's optimal. Urshifu just gives you a better time into Dura. You basically force them to KO your Urshifu before it sets up, and that could be a big issue for the Dura deck. And Urshifu is just a very strong card in the format, in my opinion, against other decks too. It also has a really good trade versus other decks. Being a, a three-prized Pokemon that can potentially take two KOs is pretty deadly. And, of course, Lugia does boast a pretty solid Lost Box matchup, which is a pretty good reason why you would want to play Lugia, because, yeah, its Lost Box matchup is pretty decent. So, yeah, Lugia definitely is S-tier right now. Probably one of the best decks in the format, easily. Very good deck. Definitely, you still have to beat Lugia. If your deck doesn't really have a good game plan against Lugia, then you're probably not having a good time at uh, Milwaukee. But, yeah, Lugia is pretty solid right now, and I do think that uh, Lugia Urshifu is a pretty cool deck that I would definitely maybe look into playing more because I think it's still good. And then we got to about Lugia Dura. So this is the other version of Lugia that people tried out. I still think Urshfu is just better. Um, I think if you're going to play Lugia Dura, it'd probably be a tier two deck. I mean, it's at the end of the day, you are still playing a Lugia deck. Now you could debate Lugia Dura has better mirror. The problem with that is though, if they have the Urshifu, you're still done for. So no matter what, you're going to be still playing chicken versus Urshifu at the end of the day. So I don't think that our Lugia Dura is very good. I also don't know if Dura really fixes any of your matchups apart from maybe the mirror match to a degree, but overall you're still going to probably struggle against like Arc Dura, which I guess like to be fair, if you're playing the Lugia Dura, you do have two Duras versus their Dura. I don't know. It's, it's too much Dura's, man. What the heck? Why is Duraldon still good? But I don't know. Lugia Dura, probably not as good as Urshfu Dura. 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like Dura just is better than Duraludon. Though Dura, like, isn't even terrible, but I would still probably just prefer to play Lugia Dura over, or Lugia Urshifu over the, the Duraludon. And we got to talk about Lost Zone, of course. Everyone's favorite deck, Lost Box. So, Lost Box, we got the two builds that are the best right now. We got the Kyogre and the Turbo build. So, there's two ways to play it with the, you know, Force Seal Stone. You're either playing it with out Kyogre or you're playing it with Kyogre. Either way, the deck is still good. Now, there are a few versions of Kyogre. I know there is Raymond's uh, top eight list that played the Articuno Paralyze in the deck. So there is that option. Um, but I guess we can classify that in the Kyogre build too. Um, but yeah, I think both builds of Lost Box are obviously S tier. I mean, Turbo Lost Box is a ridiculous deck right now. It can get turn one Dragonite, turn one Raikou is pretty disgusting. Um, and of course, the Kyogre build is also good. And that's the thing when you're playing against Lost Box, especially the Turbo build is, you don't know if they play the Kyogre or not. You're playing against it. Unless they put a Pokestop in play, a lot of the time, you don't know what build of Lost Box it is. And that can be a big issue for your, you know, your deck, right? Especially if you're doing a, you know, if you're going into game two and you lost game one because they had the Kyogre, it's like, I don't know. So yeah, Lost Box, definitely an interesting uh, deck right now to beat. Um... Yeah, I think Kyogre is still maybe the best way to play Lost Box, but the Kyogreless build is still perfectly fine, in my opinion. Both the builds are just perfectly fine, and they're both pretty good right now in the format. Though, again, I do think Kyogre is still, like, the best way to play Lost Box right now, because Kyogre is just an insanely strong card um, right now, and uh, it's a little bit harder to pilot, but I do think Kyogre is still better and still the best way to play the Turbo build, but the Kyogreless build is still fine, too, right? It still gets the job done. still a very strong deck at the end of the day, and not having to worry about the Kyogre as much, could be better if you're playing Lost Box because Kyogre does obviously cause you to have more harder flower selects and Chloris' experiment, which can ultimately cost you. Then we got like a Sky Seal Stone build of Lost Box. I mean, yeah, you can probably pull that in tier. You can put that in tier one. Whether or not you're playing Sky Seal with Dragonite or you're not playing with Dragonite or you're playing it with like Zapdos V, I still think Sky Seal Lost Box is still perfectly good. Honestly, still a tier one deck because Sky Seal Stone is still a very good card right now. Whether or not you're playing the Drapion, whether or not you're playing the Dragonite. Uh, whatever, you know, Sky Seal Stone partners you're pairing the, the deck with, I still think a Sky Seal Stone Lost Zone deck is still just really good. Because it's also a card that um, people don't see coming. It's a card that has been on and off in Lost Box right now. And it happened to me in uh, Hartford in one of my games in Day 2. I didn't know my opponent had Sky Seal Stone, and it lost me the game because I didn't know they played the Sky Seal Stone. So Sky Seal Stone can make a very big difference against... Um, any matchup where you can catch your opponent off guard, they don't see it coming, and that can be huge. Sometimes you play an escape rope and your opponent gives you a card that you can Sky Seal knock out, and it's like, oh, that actually just threw off my entire game plan. So yeah, I think Sky Seal Lost Box is still definitely tier one. I think the surprise factor Sky Seal Stone is what makes it good, and I think that's what's going to elevate it above, you know, just higher than, you know, tier 1.5, tier 2, because Sky Seal is a card nobody really thinks about right now in Lost Box, and some people do play it, some people don't, and that factor can be very big when, you know, piloting Lost Box, and it can win you games. Just your opponent not knowing you have the Sky Seal Stone can win you games. It's pretty good. Next up is Gudra. I mean, oh man, I think Gudra's probably tier 2. I, I don't know if I can put it any higher than tier 2, man. I think Gudra's falling off right now. I think its issue is that it's struggling a lot against Lost Box and against Lugia and against Arc Dura. All three of those matchups are just pretty rough for Gudra, right? Lost Box has pretty nice ways to checkmate you. I think a really good Lost Box player can checkmate your Gudra deck, and I also think that Lugia can still beat Lost uh, Gudra now with the Urshifu, and if you happen to play against Lugia Dura, even then. And then, of course, Arc Dura is another really hard matchup for Gudra, because Duraludon VMAX can one it KO Gudra with a Choice Belt and a Single Strike Energy. So, honestly, Gudra has fallen off pretty hard right now. I think that it's still Tier 2. It's one of those decks, though, that, like, it's a deck that people don't know how to play against sometimes, and that can catch them off guard. Um, but I think Lugia just has way too many bad matchups right now, or hard matchups for it to be any higher than Tier 2. Um, it is a deck, though, that people will play regardless whether or not it's, you know, good or not. People will still play Gudra. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend it. I think there's too much Dura and Urshifu, and Lost Box is still really good against it, but... People can still play it, and sometimes people don't know how to play against Gudra, and that's another big factor is when you're playing Gudra, they don't know how to play against it properly, and that honestly can be a big deal when piloting Gudra. That is one way Gudra can win games, is the opponent doesn't know what they're doing when they're playing against it. Um, next up is uh, Lost Tina, probably Tier 2. I actually kind of like the idea of Arc Tina or Lost Tina right now. The thing with Lost Tina that kind of separates it from the other Lost Zone decks is it has that better Dura matchup than you might think. The thing is, Giratina can easily KO Duraludon. So you can, you know, spit a Duraludon at some point. You can, you know, Sableye a Duraludon. 
You have Star Requiem against Duraludon. All those are pretty good things going in Giratina's favor. I mean, you still have the Sableye, so you still kind of have that Sableye power in, you know, the Mirrors with Lost Box or against Guardi. And then you just have that very good attacker with Giratina. And having access to Star Requiem is honestly really good. It can honestly be really tough for an Arc Dura deck to beat you when Giratina can do so much damage, one shot the Arceus V Stars, and have the Insta KO on the Duraludon. It is very, very deadly. The problem with Lost Tina is. Is it's not as like consistent and fast as the other Lost Zone decks, but Lost Tina is honestly pretty fine right now. I actually don't think it has a bad Mew matchup either. Um, hmm. That's one thing that it has going for it. It actually doesn't have a it doesn't have a bad Mew matchup because you can play Drapion and you probably will play Drapion. Um, but yeah, I think Lost Tina is pretty good right now. Um, but it's a deck that I don't know how good it really is. It's good in theory, like in theory, the deck seems good, right? Again, it can beat Arcdura. Um, you know, you can try to beat the mirror match with whatever you play with Roxanne, Sableye, Halucha, and, you know, Lugia, you can try to take down. I think you can be fine against Mew with you have Giratina, Drapion. So, I don't know, man. It's a, In theory, it seems good in execution. Will it be good? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I, I don't know. It's one of those decks that it just keeps doing well in Japan. So <laughs> I don't know why it can't cross over to America as well, but we'll have to see where this deck goes. Next up is Sableye, Kramzard. We'll throw that in tier 1.5. Um, Save Like Ramsard, I think, is kind of slipping a little bit. I think the power of Lost City right now is too much. And I also think that Save Like Ramsard would still maybe struggle against Turbo Lost Box. And I think it's also really not great against Lugia. I think Lugia is still a tough matchup for Save Like Ramsard. Uh, or maybe it isn't. But I do think that, like, Arc Duro is going to be a tough matchup for it. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Save Like Ramsard is still probably a tier 1.5 deck. Like, I would still put on the same level as, like, Arc Tina or Mew. But I don't think I can put this deck any higher than a tier 1.5. Um, the deck is still fine. Charizard is still a really strong attacker. Again, being able to use Charizard against V-Stars can be very good. But the only problem is, is something like Arcdura, where the Charizard would be very good, they'll just Lost City or Charizard away, and then you're going to cry. So, I don't know, man. The deck's still decent, don't get me wrong. Very good deck still. I don't hate it, but I don't think it's as good as it used to be. And I think it's kind of slipping a little bit from its, you know, graces. And, of course, we got to talk about Maraiden, everyone's favorite deck to call mid. So, Maraiden's in an interesting position. I don't hate it actually going into Milwaukee. I think it's actually better for Milwaukee than it was any other tournament we've had so far this season. The reason for that is because Maraiden has a better Arceus matchup than most decks do. And the reason for that is you have the ability to turn one knockout in Arceus V. That is really strong. Now, the question would be, though, what build of Maraiden would you rather pilot? Would you play the Reggie Lecky VMAX build, or would you play the Flaffy build? Both builds have their ups and downs. But yeah, that's one thing I do like about Maraiden. With the uptick in Arceus right now, and Lugia is also not a bad matchup for Maraiden either, don't forget. Um, Maraiden has a good time into Lugia and Arceus. And I think that's one of the benefits. I mean, it's not like I guaranteed win against Arceus. I mean, I beat a Maraiden deck on stream at Hartford, but I'm just saying that if I'm playing a Maraiden deck and I'm playing against Arceus, I'm going to feel a lot safer than if my opponent flips over a Comfy. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what gives me, you know, the reason, like, okay, Maraiden can be bad. If you're hitting Arceus decks, if you're knocking out Arceus V on turn one, it's kind of insane. And it, it, it gives you a huge gain in that matchup. And I think that's the thing about Maraiden right now. With the amount of Arceus V-Star there is, there is a good reason to play Maraiden. And I think that it's actually a bit better for Milwaukee than it was Hartford. But the question is, what build is better? So the Flaffy build, I'm going to throw in Tier 2. I think Flaffy could be fine. I, its main issue is its power level is not as high. You are relying more on the 220 damage attack of Maraiden. You do have Raichu V, which don't get me wrong, Raichu V is really good for the deck. But I really think that the Reggie Lecky V Max build is the better Man, do I really dare put Maraiden in tier 1.5, man, or do I keep it in tier 2? This is a ballsy take, because I know a lot of people call Maraiden a mid-deck, but I'm going to say this. If you hit enough Lugian Arceus, you can probably get day 2 with Maraiden Regilecki. I think Brian Regilecki is the way to go. The reason why you'd want to play Regilecki over Flaffy is Regilecki lets you knock out uh, Duraludons in one hit, and Umbreon VMAX is in one hit with the Reggie Lecky's power boost. I think that if I were to play a Maraiden deck, I would play the Reggie Lecky build because it has a better time versus Duraludon. Yeah, you do have Raichu V, which is a bit better against Dura, but it's not as good as playing Reggie Lecky. In my opinion, I just think Reggie Lecky Maraiden is the best way to play it. I don't know if you would play Magnezone V-Star or if you would play Klefki in the deck. That's kind of the, the problem with Maraiden is what build of it are you going to play? Are you going to play it with... Are you going to play it with Klefki or are you going to play it with... Uh, you're going to play it with 
without the cleft key because the cleft key build does let you have that safer lost box matchup. Magnezone also helps against lost box though. So I don't know what version of Maridan I like more if it's whether with cleft key or with Magnezone. But yeah, no, I, I, it, it is kind of ballsy to put Mirai in tier 1.5, but it's a deck that uh, if you just hit enough good matchups, I think this deck can actually get you day two. Like you just, you donk enough Arceus, you beat enough Lugia, you could get to day two with Mirai and Regilecki. That might be stretching it, and I might get roasted for putting it in tier 1.5. I might get roasted. I don't know if I can ever live this up, to be honest. I don't know if I can live this down, bro. I don't know if I can live this down. This, this might permanently stain my career as a content creator. This is going to ruin all my cred. I don't care. I'm going to say Maraidon. It's a deck that you hit enough Arceus, you hit enough Lugia, you can definitely get day two with it. Um, next up is Control. I think Control is kind of just in Rogue right now. Honestly, all three of these decks are in Rogue. I think Palkia is in Rogue and Dialga. Obviously, Dialga is a Rogue deck. A lot of people really like the Dialga deck. Uh, the Palkia deck's interesting. It's actually a couple of Palkia decks got day two at Hartford. One was playing Bibero, and the other was playing the Gardevoir Curly Engine, which is very interesting. Um, but I definitely think that Palkia is in a precarious spot right now. Um, but yeah, Penny control, unfortunately, has slipped a little bit. Even Sander admitted that he thinks that the Penny deck isn't as good as it is right now. And control actually might get better in the next set. There are some new cards that are going to make control a bit better. If you actually want to hear more about my thoughts about control next format and kind of see what's going on, I did upload a video recently where I looked at a bunch of early decks from the Paldea Evolved meta. So if you want to go check that out on the channel, make sure you go watch that. Um, but yeah, I do think Palkia is kind of cool. It's a deck that I don't know if it can compete with the best decks, in all honesty. But Palkia is a, a deck that people do like. It's got all ways to play. And it's a really sneaky deck with, like, the Cross Witchers and something like Empoleon. And the Guard of Arcurlia build with the Kyogre is kind of cool, too. So Palkia is definitely a really cool rogue deck. I would keep my eye on it. But I definitely would still consider Palkia a rogue deck. Same thing with Dialga. Obviously, Dialga is probably just, like, a rogue deck. Um, I don't know if Dialga can really take down tournament. But it is a really fun deck to play. And if somebody gets day two of Dialga, Dialga Magnezone, That'd be just fantastic. I want that to happen so badly. All right. Here's my tier list. So I think the hottest take I had was that I put Maraid and Reggie Lecky in tier 1.5. But I'm thinking about it, man. Maybe, it, you know what? Uh, I think Maraid and Reggie Lecky's probably tier two. All right. You know what? I'm, I'm, no, no, we're, we're bumping it down a peg. No, nah, no, nah, screw it. Maraid and Reggie Lecky's tier, tier, tier two. Um, yeah, no, tier 1.5 is way too hot of a take, even for my liking. I don't know. I thought about it some more. I'm like, nah, it's not that good. It's definitely decent, though. Again, Playing Maraidon for Milwaukee isn't even a bad idea because depending on how much Arceus you hit and Lugia, you can get to day two because if you're knocking out Arceus Vs on turn one with Maraidon and you're chilling. And then, of course, obviously your Lugia matchup is pretty decent too. So, yeah, I do think that Maraidon is still like an okay deck right now. I don't know. I think it was a little too ballsy to put in tier 1.5. I don't think the deck is that good, to be honest. But I do think that Maraidon Reggie like definitely a tier two deck. Might even be one of the higher placing tier two decks. In all honesty, this might even be the best tier two deck. I think Maraidon Reggie Lecky is probably the best tier two deck, if I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, there you go. That is my tier list for the Milwaukee Regionals. Going into probably my last tournament in the Scarlet and Violet meta. Of course, Peldea Evolved is around the corner, and I cannot wait to do content for Peldea Evolved. I will be doing some more Peldea Evolved videos this week, so definitely keep around the channel for that. And, of course, I will be doing more videos talking about Milwaukee and my thoughts about it and with the meta heading into it. There you go. I'll leave a link to the tier list down below. Let me know what you thought about the tier list down below. What did you think of my opinions on some of these cards? I know my takes might have been pretty hot in this video, so I definitely want to hear your opinion about some of my, my takes and stuff. <laughs> All right, y'all. Catch y'all later. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on another video here on the second channel, and bye-bye.